original investigators believe he murdered her. They yeah. just can't prove it. It's my first initial call to the private investigator working on my dad's case. My wife jumps up from the table and says, Oh my God, who is this man coming in the backyard? I divorced him because I couldn't trust him at all. He lied to me at the very beginning. He was living two separate lives. In the water about 30 yards away, and identified it as it was a person. table okay. where we go through everything and talk about it okay. and then we can tell fill Michael in and Cole in on everything we got all right okay. I'm gonna put Buddy's address in here okay. that's what bugs me we have to face the truth because it's hard so we can get to the other side and so we can put it to bed it's never over it will always be there the trauma of this the the impact it's had the the fact that like you guys lost your mom is never gonna be better so should we just, to keep the peace, not say anything so that, or not look into this at all? I think we absolutely should look into this. My dad is living in a home with three children and another woman and it can just as easily happen to her. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like, yeah. I know we have no obligation to Sarah and her family. Yeah. But I'm like, and if she chooses to be with him after this comes out, like that's, that's her choice. But like, I also think maybe she doesn't understand what happened here. Yeah. Does she know that he had bought a house with another woman a month before they were taking pictures at a fair together? But we know that picture was taken at the fair four months after Carolyn passed away. Yeah. So at some point he bought a house with another woman with another family in Wisconsin and then changed course and stayed here. Yeah. What's crazy is like, was he planning on leaving his job? Do you know, Bree? I think he was, but they offered him something that he couldn't refuse, so he stayed. Either that that's what he told me, or maybe it was because Wisconsin woman broke it off with him and he was just like, all right, well, I have no point in being here. He told me it was because he got a really good raise. That's why he decided to stay, so. Cool. I mean, what on an outsider not being in the family's perspective? At the moment, I've I have read through all I think it's 18 pages of the recorded interviews and everything like that. A lot of the rumors that I hear about this guy is that it seems like he gets tired of the situation that he's in, or his ego is constantly pushing him to be bigger than he is in some cases. That was really interesting that. Also in the reports, some neighbors say that, you know, he worked for the Coast Guard and he was in the Special Ops Force on the Coast Guard and was trained in denuclearization of nuclear weapons. And then the investigator gets his employment records and he's a shopkeeper for the Coast Guard. He's just procurement and asset allocation. And, and these are two polar fucking opposites in my mind. Sorry to such a huge gap in between those two things that it starts to become a question and then you hear about all of the women and then he starts something new and then he gets really frustrated because he feels stuck in the thing that's old and if he's if he's this capable 
I think that there's a huge risk that he's done it before or he'll do it again. Right, that they don't even can't even comprehend the impact that their actions has had, which I think is very clear with how you've been treated, Bree, is that he has no concept of the impact. Yeah. And then Mike, who we interviewed last night, basically got a text then because Carolyn's son had reached out and told Chris that one of the members that's with us is here. And so now he knows at least one of us is here, if not all of us. I don't know. He only mentioned one person. So how does that make you feel that Chris is aware, not that you're in town, but that someone else who's with us is in town? I think he's going to be scared. Just the fact that someone's even looking into it. So that's the nice thing is he doesn't know the grand scope of what's happening, but he does know something's happening. I personally would rather he sit in his nice little emotional cocoon, completely unaware of everything that's going on until the trailer drops and people suddenly hit him with a bunch of questions. Right. <laughs> that's just where I'm at. I, I don't want him to know anything. I think we'll get the best reaction out of him when he realizes that this has been going on for months yeah. and nobody has said anything to him. Right. Nobody's come to him to try to protect him and given him the full breakdown. And I don't believe that you'll get a, an angry or a violent reaction from him, I think he'll play the victim. That he'll be angry privately, and then from that point forward, we're attacking him, we're ruining the legacy of his marriage, which, I mean, sorry, you already did. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the legacy's done. You got rid of everything and moved in with a new woman. What, what legacy were you protecting? We're almost there. You getting in the zone? Yeah. It's the park or driveway with the green Jeep. Okay. Hey. Hey. Hi, Dan. Good. How are you? Good. Oh, missed you, girl. Missed you too. Hi. Hi, this is Ash. I stopped talking to him. You you probably have said more words to him than I have since she's passed away. And he don't give a damn either because he's got everything. Well, he's got his life. Yeah. But and I he's don't got talk all to him. extra money now. Too. You know why I don't talk to him because of him disparaging her. The things the things he said about her and the things he's done with her that he got rid of her. The day after she died, he got rid of her. I just. And he'd go across the street when I wouldn't be over there and be putting her down here and telling how, how, who how bipolar it? she was and everything. Who I does never that? saw it if she was. Yeah. But who does that anyway? When your wife dies, especially. Yeah. Or somebody that dies in a tragic accident. And, and who this, does that? I know, was a ball face I was talking about how many how much the bill was on credit cards that she had run up. That was bullshit. She talked to me a dozen times about how did I get, to, you know, I told her, she was, Chris is just going crazy. How did I get him to quit spending money? I said, well, put him on a weekly budget, give him that X amount of dollars and, and take his credit cards from him. But she couldn't get the cards from him. Now, it's crazy too, because when we were talking to Mike, he was like, his big thing was how frugal she was and how she yeah. would, she would like trade things. And and obviously people changed. I'm not saying that just because someone once was frugal, they're not. Well, like her woodwork. Instead of going out and buying wood to work with, she got pallets. That's now. how he described it. Yeah, she would figure out other ways to get yeah. what she wanted yeah. so she could save some money. All my living room furniture was built by her. Really? Yeah. Mm, that, that table. Oh yeah. She made that table? Yeah, for me. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many times, though, when she'd be up here, maybe cooking for us up here or something, or down there, and she'd say something, and Chris would give it this. I like, noticed that a lot, stupid too. Stupid woman. The rolling of eyes. Yeah. You've seen them. <laughs> yeah. He, he didn't respect what her. Was, how long ago did you originally meet her? Probably 12 years total, maybe a little longer. What were your first impressions of her? I, I, I instantly liked her because she had one of the best smiles I've ever seen. Yes. Just the bubble ball full of energy. And who couldn't like that? And that's what Mike said too. She was just full of energy. When did you know you were having deeper feelings for her? Kind of in the back of my mind, 
I was just kind of thinking, I wish she was with me, yeah. you know. And as it turns out, she had pretty much the same feelings, you know, progressed from there. And it, it was wonderful. I, th I thank God for the seven and a half years he let us have together because uh, we were together almost every day. And half the time we were together on weekends and Chris was there, but I can't explain the comfort we took from each other. Mm -hmm. Just can, it, it was like we had known each other from birth. We were extremely you know, comfortable and happy together. Didn't have to be talking. We used to sit and read together. You know, yeah. she'd come up here just to read and everything. And it, it was wonderful. The world got robbed. The world got robbed. I mean, she probably confided in you a little bit about her and Chris's relationship. A lot. Had it been rocky? Chris kind of manipulated her in a way that he put her down that she felt, I think, challenged to be uh, up to his standards. Mm. She cooked, she cleaned. All her chores and stuff were done before she and I would take off and go riding or whatever. And uh, the neighbors down there had heard them getting loud at night. She had told me he was getting meaner and meaner towards her. And she called me one night and said he had grabbed her by the throat, but that she thought it was okay. And I said, I'm coming down. She said, no, wait. She came back a few minutes later and said, everything's okay. He's begging forgiveness. The grabbing her by the throat was just a few months before she was killed. Did you feel helpless in it, or how did you feel? I, I still wanted to go down there, but then uh, I didn't want to be an intrusion if she had something under control. He's been mad at her up here when she wasn't here and ranting and raving to me and stormed off my porch yelling, I'm done with her, you keep her. You know, and that was telling me he pretty much knew, you know, you keep her now. You yeah. Know? And I said, not a problem. <laughs> you like, send her over. Yeah. Send me your yeah. stuff. I'll Let keep me come her. down there and help pack her up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know if she agreed with me, but I told her that she and I couldn't do anything until it was totally the reason was Chris. I felt like that would change what we had. For us, nobody else was involved in our relationship. Chris, not my friends, not anybody, because it was Carolyn and I. It was me and her, nobody else was in any kind of consideration. We didn't want to hurt anybody, but there was no consideration as far as anybody having any input in our relationship. We just blended together. Yeah. I've, I've never experienced it in my life. Top everything off, she was my best friend. I miss her. The thing that was really good about us was how comfortable we were with each other. I mean, there was no competition. Uh, I didn't belittle her and she didn't belittle me. I, I totally respected her as the person she was. And she was the same way. We made no demands for each other. It just happened that everything was good for us. You know, yeah, she'd get a little tick when I'd be on a trip and didn't communicate as well as I should because I go on a trip on my bike, phone goes in my saddlebags. <laughs> I was gone seven and a half weeks one time and when I got home, I was expecting hugs and kisses. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it was ugly. <laughs> She'd let you have it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drew horns, you know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Been there. But, I, you know, I'm, you know, he was talking about all the drinking and stuff afterwards, and he could tell you how many days it was. But that was just, that was just his manipulation. Yeah. That's all that was. And I knew that. The day she passed away, how did you find out, I guess, about it first, and then how did you interpret uh, somebody it? Somebody asked me if I, knew where they were and Mike and Austin uh, came over here. My son Nick and I, we all jumped in separate vehicles and we went over on the other side of the bay where the boat was and I didn't think anything uh, because I was concerned, you know, about uh, Carolyn's welfare and everything. And the dogs, all three dogs were on the boat and by the way, they were bone dry. I'll tell you about that later. And uh, we got the dogs. Uh, the boat, the anchor was 
thrown up on the front deck and rope all around, you know. And after, you know, hindsight, that ain't Chris. Yeah. And uh, so we were just concerned for them. And then uh, they found Chris on the other shore and uh, took him uh, to the emergency room. And we all went over there. And Austin went in and said he couldn't talk and didn't want to see anybody or anything like that. So we sat there for a while and then we all left. And the next morning they found Carolyn. And it was. How did you find out that they found Carolyn? I don't remember. No. I don't. I'm, I'm sure somebody told me. But I know I was down at the water, and they had helicopters and boats going, you know, all night long. Did you think there was any chance that she'd be found alive? I was hoping. Yeah. yeah. But I was hoping she had somehow gotten to shore. She did. Did you think when you heard that she had gone swimming in the middle of the bay, not near a shore, that that seemed out of character? I mean, that was bullshit. Yeah. That was a goddamn lie. Had you ever seen her jump into water like that or? I talk never about saw her in water over her head without a life vest on. Yeah. She told me one time that she and Chris had been canoeing out there. And hers turned over, she got tangled up and couldn't get out. She thought she was going to drown, and she finally got out, and Chris was just sitting in his canoe and kayak and watching. Never even got out of his kayak. And she told me then, said, if it ever comes between life and death for me and Chris, she says, I'm going to die. And those were her exact words. And I believed her, and I couldn't believe he didn't need it. You know, if the woman I love kayak turned over, I don't care if her head's above water, I'm going in to help her. The stories that differed so much. Did Chris ever tell any different stories about his career in the Coast Guard to you guys? Chris tried to give the impression that he was a special operation. And he even showed a scar on his side, the head across the street. Didn't show it to me and said that's where he got shot with an AK-47. Chris? Yeah. Well, all these years I've known him, he never said nothing about that to me. I wonder if that was his hernia operation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but. Sorry. No. <laughs> what is a sip of coffee? <laughs> Yeah, you want some more, man? It's, no, I want to spray it all over the camera. <laughs> it's a, uh, all right, I'm a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> Tough war. But I know when somebody's saying they were in Vietnam and telling stories about it, I know when they're a goddamn liar. Mm -hmm. Because we don't talk about it. And the people that are telling stories might be telling stories they heard, but they didn't experience. And I knew everything Chris said, even in relationship with um, I'm la la la, was a lie. For one thing, he couldn't get his facts straight. Another thing, if he'd been hit with an AK right there, it would have tore him to pieces. Wouldn't be just a little round scar there. There had been an exit side of it, and he'd have been blown up inside because the force of the bullet sends trauma through the entire body. And I know because I've seen it. I know what it does. So I call bullshit. After you found out that Carolyn, they were looking for Carolyn, did you think something nefarious had happened right then, or was it later that you started to think that? It, it was later. It was after I talked to Chris that once they transferred him from that emergency care to the hospital. And uh, it was after that that I really started thinking about it. And then when I heard what he told some other people around here and his story wasn't even in the ballpark with mine, you know, and uh, of what he had told me. And uh, it just hit me. No, this ain't an accident. 
Well, and that's that's when I went to them. Uh, I guess it was a month or two after. I don't remember. I, I, I chewed on this a good while. Yeah, yeah, because that's a lot to take yeah, in. You yeah, think because, about that. because even with everything it's said and done, Chris was a friend of mine. He was a friend outside of mine and Carolyn's relationship together, but he was a friend nevertheless, you know. Then when I started thinking how things had deteriorated just before and there were other things like everybody was wanting to go out on the boat that week actually, or that coming weekend, the weekend she died, wanting to go out and cook out on the beach somewhere and something, and no, we can't do that because the boat doesn't have its up-to-date registration. And then all of a sudden he's out on a boat that's a Coast Guard that knows the penalty goes out on an unregistered boat. So yeah, it, it, I thought about it, I don't, I don't remember how long it was before I went to the investigators, but it chewed on me pretty good. I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do nothing. Do you feel like the investigators did a thorough job of I, I truly think they did. They went up and down uh, both shores looking for uh, security cameras and stuff. Yeah, you know, I just told them, I said, it don't add up, and they said, it don't add up to us either. Yeah. And they believe it. Well, I know this, knowing Carolyn like I did, if he tried to put her out of that boat, she'd fight like hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And all the times they've been on that boat, he's never texted pictures. He did this time. He didn't text them to me, he texted them to Keith. And her. Right. And she yeah. got him, yeah. And he posted it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So he, like, I feel like he was making a point to. Yeah, we're happy. Yeah, that's what I felt like it was. We're happy, but she's gonna go live with Buddy at the end of the month. And you guys. And she's got life insurance. Do you know how much the insurance was for? I don't know. I I know this. Carolyn's wishes were for it to be split between the kids, mm -hmm. and I know he was. Spending money hand over, spending it crazy. He didn't even take the furniture down there. He bought all new furniture. And like I said, he came in with that TV for me because he said Carolyn would have wanted me to have it because she and I had been looking at TVs. And if I'd wanted that TV, I'd have bought it. Right. You know, I'm not broke. Yeah. And then after I got her bike, I, I just mentioned I'm gonna have to take her seat off and get me another seat because she had a seat that moved you forward. Well, I got long legs. He came in a couple of days later with a, a LaPera daddy long leg seat that moves you back two inches further than the regular Harley seat. And I know for a fact, because I looked at it, it's a $600 seat. And that's a, that's a kind so of why are you case. doing that for me? What Can you tell us some of the different stories? Can you go through each story that you heard about what happened that day? Yeah. The first one he told me, and then the other stories are from the stories he told other people, mm -hmm. was that uh, Carolyn had wanted to go swimming. And that raised my eyebrow then, but emotionally I was, you know, still thinking it had to be an accident. And she got in the water and got in trouble. He jumped in to help her, and the boat was drifting away, and he told her, let me get the boat. And she said, don't leave me. And after that, he said he swam hours pulling her. And he said, it just got to where I couldn't do it anymore. And I thought about the kids and everything, and I let her go. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine, if he even did that, I can imagine the terror she felt. Other oh, yeah. story was uh, they were just riding along. All of a sudden, she jumped out of the boat for no reason and he couldn't get to her before she went under. That one of the dogs fell overboard and she jumped in to get it. Oh, yeah, that and way. that she went under. None of the dogs were wet and these are dogs you damn near have to blow dry to get dry. Yeah. And that's just a couple hours, they're not gonna dry. Well, and how would the dog have got back on the boat and neither of them did? Uh, there it is. Yeah. And the other one was they stopped so she could go swimming and she got in trouble. I don't believe any of them. She wouldn't have done it. 
And uh, I think at some point he had mentioned she had drank a lot. Well, yes, yeah, she had alcohol in her system, but I would say, if anything, she drank two or three beers while they were out on the boat. Yeah, she only had a blood, a blood alcohol of 0.5, so okay. maybe it was two beers at most, yeah. even if. Did the neighbors, when you guys started comparing stories, did everyone start thinking something weird was happening? Yeah. Or what was the... Every, everybody felt it. Bonnie called her house direct, almost directly across from them. She said Carolyn was in her dreams at night. She couldn't let it go because she had heard Carolyn screaming bloody murder from the house at night and stuff. Jeannie lives next door to her. She thought it. Both the people over there believed it. Ex-cop across the street, and he said that's the way to commit the perfect murder. So nobody truly that knew Carolyn in this neighborhood believed it, believes it's an accident. Um, and now I, I can't say possibly exactly how they feel. I can say how a couple of them feel. Yeah. And we think uh, the whole thing was greed. Because yeah. he had told me several times up here on the porch when he'd be mad at Carolyn and he'd stop here instead of going home because they had had an argument or something on the phone. And, and, you know, he he just talked, to, you know, about her that uh, I needed a divorce her, but I can't afford a divorce. She'll get, you know, half of my stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, ain't half of it hers to start with, because I knew her money is what put her in all the houses here. But uh, I know it wasn't an accident, and it wasn't a spur of the moment thing. It was planned, because. If he was wanting to take her out on the boat, he'd have got his stickers and put on the boat. But if he did that, then he might have other people with him. Coast Guard, 10 years, rescuing and stuff, and you can't save the woman you love? Once again, let me call bullshit. Do you know what he actually did in the Coast Guard? No. He's a bookkeeper. So he wasn't even out on search and rescue missions. We well, have his employee. That ain't what he tells people. He, yeah. was, he was actually like a supply Shop, yeah. Shop and, and I guess that's why when he was talking special ops, I never believed a word of it. Yeah. It's funny how something like this, how the truth comes out about a person. Yeah. Well, I knew a long time ago Chris was a liar and a manipulator. And that why he might be patting you on the back, he might be telling somebody what a douchebag he thinks you are. He was not someone I trusted. And I trusted Carolyn with anything and everything. And I never let anybody in my life like that before. It was different with Carolyn.